Welcome back to Red and Blue. A recent poll shows former President Trump still at the top of many Republican voters' list to be the nominee in 2024. According to a recent USA Today Ipsos poll conducted after the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, 59 percent of Republicans said Trump should be the 2024 GOP nominee. For more on all of this, Stephen Law joins us now. He's got a lot of titles. Let me go through them slowly. President and CEO of One Nation and conservative super PAC, American Crossroads, also CEO of the Senate Leadership Fund. Stephen, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. What are your thoughts on this poll? I know it's just one. And the overall Trump dynamic within the Republican Party and the midterms. The president continues to uh, have a lot of support from within the party, and certainly these latest events uh, involving the Mar-a-Lago uh, document search have, have uh, put the spotlight uh, back on him. But I, I think, you know, for folks like us who are uh, focused on the uh, Senate elections, uh, the, the real focus it is and needs to be on uh, the performance of this administration and Democrats who uh, have uh, majority control of both houses of Congress and what they've done on inflation, uh, spending, uh, crime and other issues that are fundamentally important to uh, the uh, electorate right now as they start thinking about the midterm election. Now, Stephen, I've seen on your Twitter feed that you have identified yourself as either crime or permissiveness about crime as the sleeper issue of the midterms. Do you still believe that? I think that's exactly right. If you look at this latest uh, CBS poll, in fact, uh, one thing that was quite striking to me is that right under uh, inflation, uh, and the economy, uh, crime was listed as, as an issue of top concern uh, to voters, I think by 69 percent of voters. I mean, that's a huge, huge uh, thing that we're starting to see, particularly in cities and then in suburbs that surround the cities where you've had this very lurid, serious crime that, that's uh, made it tough to even want to go into the city to, you know, do what you might ordinarily do. Uh, so we think that's a big issue. It's something we're talking about right now in the Pennsylvania Senate race with advertising hitting uh, John Fetterman for being soft on crime. So I want to ask you about Pennsylvania and also neighboring Ohio. How do you think both of those races look right now? Uh, I think both of them are very, very competitive. I'll start with Pennsylvania first. Uh, we had a very bruising, tough Republican primary uh, that left Dr. Oz with a battered image, but I think he's getting back in the game and he's going to be a good general election candidate. And then, as I said, with John Fetterman, he has a very, very bad record of permissiveness on crime, particularly his role as chairman of the state board of pardons, where he let people off the hook who committed very serious crimes. And I think that's going to be a big issue. Uh, then you look at Ohio. I feel like at the end of the day, we'll be fine uh, in Ohio. It's a Republican state. Donald Trump won that by eight percentage points both times he ran. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, uh, we're going to show that Tim Ryan, who's a pretty good candidate, has nevertheless uh, been selling a line about himself, pretending to be a MAGA conservative when, in fact, he's voted with Nancy Pelosi 100 percent of the time. So, Stephen, for our audience's benefit, you are very close to the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, he has aspirations to once again be the Senate Majority Leader. And he said last week, while back in Kentucky, 50-50 chance of regaining the Senate. That sounds not only cautious, but less optimistic than Republicans were two or three months ago. What has changed? Uh, well, Leader McConnell has always been cautious. That hasn't changed. A and uh, his uh, discussion about what he thinks the odds are of this cycle uh, haven't changed uh, either. It is a uh, tough cycle uh, for us because we've got a lot of territory uh, to defend. Two states you mentioned, Pennsylvania and Ohio, and Wisconsin is another one, Nor uh, North Carolina as well. So we've got to hold our own territory. But if we do that, we've got some great pickup opportunities in, in states like uh, Nevada and uh, New Hampshire and Georgia. So I, I think we're going to have some real opportunities. I and and uh, but, but as you note, Leader McConnell is cautious and careful. That's why he's so successful in politics, is he doesn't just uh, hand out the spin. Uh, he wants to win, and he knows how much hard work that takes. Stephen, I always listen carefully to what you say and what you don't say. You did not list Arizona in the ranking of possible Republican pickups. And as I understand it, your organization's made some important strategic decisions about not investing as much as you might originally have in Arizona. Why? Well, we've still got uh, over $12 million booked uh, in activity there for the month of October. 
And uh, so I would, we're leaving the door wide open there. Uh, and if you, if you look uh, at, at that race, uh, a lot of Arizonans are starting to figure out that Mark Kelly has been voting right down the line with the Pelosi-Schumer-Biden agenda, and people don't like it. Uh, we just uh, always move money around at this point in the game to uh, different opportunities. And uh, as we noted, uh, when we did it, we had an investment to make in Ohio that we weren't expecting to do. And so that was what uh, caused us to rejigger uh, some of the money. But we leave the door wide open. And, and not only there, the, another couple of states that I didn't mention uh, that could be on the list are states like uh, Colorado and Washington State, where we have tremendously high-quality candidates who are running exceptional races, and we hope those races will become competitive as well. So Democrats feel that they've got a little bit of a bounce in their step, and that's their... They're entitled to feel that way. They feel mm -hmm. like the Inflation Reduction Act is helpful, that they see a little bit picking up in Biden's approval rating. They feel as if there is momentum and things are shifting in this big midterm election calculation. Do you see that? Well, I think they had a, a good summer among Democrats. If you look at the polling changes, uh, Biden's approval numbers and other issues like that, most of that is Democrats coming home, Democrats uh, feeling invested in the cycle after being completely uh, tuned out. <clears throat> but, you know, if I look at uh, Joe Biden's approval rating numbers uh, right now, job approval rating numbers in your poll, if you told me that uh, the disapproval of the pr sitting president this close to the election was going to be 55 percent, I'd take that. Uh, particularly given the fact that we have a collapsing stock market, you continue to have inflation problems. As we discussed earlier, crime is going to continue to be a very significant issue. And uh, the, the, the compositive issues that, at the end of the day, I think voters are going to have in mind when they go to the voting booth this November are all issues where Republicans can win on uh, if, we, if we engage those issues and talk about them uh, heading into November. Stephen, what you haven't mentioned is something that Democrats want to pin on almost every Republican running statewide in this campaign, which is abortion, not just abortion, but as a proxy for fundamental rights and freedoms and stability in politics. And there have been some Republicans who have been backpedaling a little bit on this. How do you see abortion playing out in the races you're most interested in and will be invested in in this cycle? Well, you know, again, I think this is an issue that helps Democrats get Democrats back in the fold. Uh, helps them get uh, younger voters uh, re-engaged on their side. I, I think, again, if you, if you look at your own uh, poll, which I, I, I studied uh, with great detail, you know, the top issues are still the inflation, economy, uh, the crime, as we talked about earlier. Then further down uh, is abortion. I think it's possible the Democrats are making a big mistake by trying to make the entire summer about that. And then when we come back to the fall, they'll already have talked about that. And then we have to go back to the things that really make people think about who they want to support. And that is whether this administration and the, the management in Congress has been doing a good job in the issues they care about, which is what's the cost of groceries? What's the cost of gas? How's the economy doing? And is my uh, IRA or my uh, 401k still worth what it was a couple of years ago? Stephen Law, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for your perspective. Thank you very much.